We will move on to the Toledo Rockets. And Jason Candle has continued to underwhelm year after year after year. They went 7 and 6 last year. They were 8 and 5 against the spread. They went 5 and 3 in the conference. Uh had some big losses. Like some some borderline NFL guys. Linebacker Jonathan Jones, cornerback Samuel Womack, their center Bryce Harris is gone, wide receiver Bryce Mitchell, the safety Tyson Anderson, uh, cornerback Justin Clark, and the safety Saeed Holt are both out. Um, they This is a team that always has talent, right? Uh, and yep. most of the talent this year is on defense. They're number 43 in roster strength. They're overall number 81 because the offense is number 101. Uh, they do yeah. have, looking at the offense, quarterback Daquan Finn was a freshman last year and played really, really well. 18 touchdowns, only two interceptions. But the offense was 97th in third down conversions and 99th on fourth down conversions. Uh, you got to look at some of the transfers that they brought in. They brought in uh, the running back Boone from Maryland and wide receiver Mikel Barkley from TCU. Uh, could those guys provide a little more consistency on offense? Uh, possibly. Um they had a 55-45 to 45 rushing to pass balance last year. I wonder if that stays the same this year. Um, because they ran a lot, but I, if they trust the quarterback a little more this year, that might open that thing up. That's what Jason Candle kind of was known for a little bit. Um, their projected SP Plus record is 9-3. and three. Uh, But again, they always underperform their SP Plus record. Like, this is the best recruiting team in the MAC every single year. Uh, what drove me crazy... This team went seven and six, and yet they were number seven in PPA margin last year. They should have been a lot better. Uh, a stat that that drives me insane: they were number thirteen in turnover margin, which is awesome. But they were dead last in the FBS in penalties per game. Like that will kill you every time. Uh, looking at the defense, they finished fourteenth in sack rate, sixteenth in overall havoc rate. Uh, the co-defense coordinator Craig Kuligowski, who used to be at Miami, he went to Alabama for a little bit. Um, his hiring in 2020 has worked great. The front seven does look explosive again, but you got to figure out, like, can the D limit the big plays? They gave up 165 plays of 10-plus yards last year. Uh, they got big names. They got Devin Maddox back as, as a wide receiver. They got safety Nate Bauer in, uh, defensive end Deshaun Johnson. Um, you got to clean up the penalties. You, you got to get the passing game going a little more. The offensive roster strength is a little weak, but with Finn again in his second year, he should improve that 57.6% completion percentage. Uh, they were 1-7 in, in one-score games in the last two seasons, and their kicker, Thomas Kluke, was only 14 out of 24 on field goals. you got to improve special teams. you got to get better uh, in the margins in order to be able to have one of those 9-3 and three seasons like they're predicting. I think this team's going to be good. I mean, they, they've got an easy enough schedule. Um, I say easy enough. I mean, we know this side of the conference is a little bit stronger. But their non-conference, they've got LIU, UMass, at Ohio State, and at San Diego State. They they should get at least two of those. They could oh, compete yeah. with San Diego State. So, Ooh. I mean, if, if you, you get... You think this team's better than we think. I, I've, got them, I've got them losing to San Diego State. I've got them 8-4. and four. So... Okay. You know, all right. I'm I'm a little bit more pessimistic, I guess, about all these teams. I think I'm one game behind you on all of them. I've got, I've got them, okay. I've got them seven and five. Seven and five. Okay. That's a, well. You had uh, you had <laughs> excuse me. NIU at seven and five too, right? Uh, yes, Northern Illinois. Okay. Yes, oh, you had them seven and five also. Yeah. Yeah. So we're okay, right. we're about the same. So I I had Central Michigan at uh, at nine and three. You had them at eight and four. Uh, but you like uh, Toledo at da, 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 seven and seven five. five also. So yeah, I've got them eight and four. Uh, I think like I don't have them quite where SP Plus has them projected, which is Bill Conley's metric. Um, but I do think you know I, I, I will tell you this: I think Western Michigan is going to drop off this year. Ball State is going to drop off quite a bit. Uh, they yep. should be able to handle Bowling Green. Uh, at Eastern Michigan could be a little tricky, but that's maybe only because I, I trust Chris Creighton. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, you know, the other side of the conference, they, they got Buffalo, Bowling Green, and do, 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 who am I missing? Uh, oh, Kent State. So, you know, I mean, they and, and they get Kent State at home. Like, I, I think the schedule sets up for them to have a pretty decent year. They could certainly uh, win the MAC this year. Like, it, yeah. But they could do that every year. So we'll just have to see. We'll see what they do. 
Uh, what do you think is – do you think Jason Candle – there was a there was talk in the offseason that he was being kind of recruited to take the Miami offensive coordinator job. Do you think that would have been a smart idea for him? No. Like with the I way that, with the way that things have gone until I mean it would have been raised for sure, but Ooh, yes. the way that things have gone like it, it, it <laughs> not to not to be cliche but the candle is kind of burning out on Jason Candle a little bit. You remember how much hype there was for him uh, after uh, God? What's the what's the Iowa State coach's name? I just went blank. Matt Campbell after Matt Campbell Matt left. Campbell? Yeah, yeah. So once he left Toledo because he did a great job at Toledo. Jason Candle came in, had a really good first year, and everybody thought, oh, this is the next one. This is the next guy. And and it has not been that at all. Yeah, but hang on. That, that Miami OC job, that uh, that job equivalent will always be there. The, there'll, be, there'll be nine power five jobs looking for OCs all the time. Okay? So that's, that's, not, that's not anything where you got to run and jump at. If you don't take it now, that job's never coming to you. Okay? He can always go and do that so. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Even if you get fired, the, you'll still have a job. Like, yep, that's a, okay. That, I guess that if, makes if sense. If you if you th- if you think he's good enough of a play caller and an offensive developer, then then somebody will hire him. That's true. That's I was looking at it as as maybe a chance to take that job, and then that can get you a a P five job quicker than. Well, but the problem you know. is, is if no, because because you got to look at the resume, man. If you're gonna hire him for a P five job, but he wasn't successful at Toledo and the guy before him was successful at Toledo and that guy is now moderately successful at P5, why would you take a chance on the guy that wasn't successful at the Toledo job and then was an OC at a big boy school that might be ramping up? How much of that is his talent and how much of that is him? Ah, uh, okay. I think those yeah. questions I think those questions are always going to be there. They're just always going to be there to try to get him a power five job. But there's nothing uh, yeah. wrong with if you can't if you can't be great at Toledo in three or four years and you end up an OC at one of these monster schools with huge budgets and you make a gang of money, okay, like that's a great living. Why do you have to be the head coach? There's you know there's only so many of those big boy jobs out there. That's a valid point. That's you. You do have a valid point there. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.